All right, so today's video, we are going to be installing a half horsepower submersible well pump, and I'm gonna show you just how to do it. So before you install a well pump, first you need to know a few things about how deep to put it. Now, most of the time you're gonna have a well tag um, put on the outside of the well casing, and it'll tell you the depth of the diameter, how much water it makes, and uh, the suggested depth of the well pump, and the depth of the casing. So in this case, the well casing is 80 feet, and it makes 10 gallons a minute. So we're gonna try to keep the pump inside of the PVC casing, and that way it will actually keep down on the sediment, since it's only a 10 gallon a minute pump, and the well itself makes 10 gallons a minute. We're gonna go ahead and set it at 80 foot, and it will produce water perfectly, and hopefully it'll be clear water. Do the wiggle wiggle. So if you noticed he was wiggling the pipe on prior to that, we used the blowtorch right there. We heat the pipe up for about 10 seconds. That allows it to become uh, a lot more pliable. And then uh, you just push it on the barbs. Gonna wanna use two stainless steel clamps. Now take notice that the head of the clamp and the wire on opposite sides. That way when the wire goes up, the wire doesn't interfere with the clamps. Now due to the fact that this pump is only going in 80 to 100 feet and it is a half horsepower pump, we're only using a plastic ABS fitting here. If you're gonna put a pump any deeper than that, I would recommend uh, upgrading to a stainless steel fitting. Now because this is a two wire pump, there is no need for a control box, so all we have is two hot wires. If you hook up your ground wire first, you can't mix them up. I like to keep uh, all my wires kind of in a straight line, not twisted. And dealing with twisted wires will give you a open up a door for premature failure of the wire in the future. This, uh, in this instance, because the well pump is uh, being kept in the casing, it will protect the wires from ever uh, failing due to uh, rubbing against the rock wall. Now, if you are installing a well pump, it probably would behoove you to get a uh, epoxy heat shrink kit. That way you can just use um, a blowtorch or a heat gun to create your waterproof seal around your wire connections here. Now what I use is double-sided rubber tape which works just as good. It sticks to itself and it provides a waterproof seal around the electrical splice. find this listed in the uh, description below in the video. So the first thing I like to do is pull my wires tight to make sure that they're straight. I can put a little wrap of tape here and hold it in place. I like to try to bend my, my pipe straight. Come 
down here. Keep my wires nice and tight. I cover up the clamps with electrical tape. That will protect them from the elements. Helps to prevent them from rusting out. I always recommend using black electrical tape. Duct tape will actually dissolve in the water. Zip ties are also not a good idea. Zip ties will actually uh, all slide to the bottom as you use them pump vibrates and kicks on, it'll slide down. So don't use zip ties or duct tape. Then as you come up, do the candy cane effect with your tape. You get up here to where the wire splice was and do solid wraps. So from here on out, we like to tape it every three foot. And as you tape it, take your tape and overlap itself. I do th uh, four or five wraps, stacking it on top of itself. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. If you notice, I'm keeping the wire on the bottom side of the pipe. That's important. As you tape it. If you had the wire on top of the pipe, you would actually be left with humps of wire when you install it. Okay, so the next step, we're gonna be putting on the well seal. So the well seal is kind of tight. You have to push it on and kind of twist it, get it to go in. We're gonna feed the wire through the hole on the bottom of the well seal. Now, one of the holes is a vent and the other is for the wire. Feeding that through now. The next step is we're gonna put two stainless steel clamps over the pipe. Notice he heated that up for about eight seconds. I'm gonna twist it and push. What that does, that allows the uh, pipe to be pliable enough to kind of swedge into the barbs on that fitting. So we're all done with that. I'll give a quick overview. Got a 240 volt, half horsepower, some RSP well pump, two clamps taped up nicely, candy cane. This is the wire splice, taped solid. And then from there on, black electrical tape, taped about four or five wraps every three feet, all the way to the top. This pump is only going in 80 feet. The next thing to do is drop it in the borehole. We'll have to tighten these bolts. 
Now since the well pump has been installed, I wanted to go over a quick little uh, snippet here. These bolts, if you are looking to change out your well pump as the reason why you're here with this video, never take these bolts out. It's okay to loosen them, but never take them out because the bolt itself will actually fall and drop down in the well. This is a swedge style fitting uh, uh, device. It's kind of like a sandwich. So these bolts right here hold the two pieces of bread together and the meat in the middle is rubber. So as you tighten it and it squeezes it together, it swedges the rubber out, which uh, swedges it against the PVC casing. So never remove these bolts, but you can loosen them. Now that that's tight, nothing can move and it holds itself nice and firm. Now the reason why we're hooking the system up like this with the bladder tank out at the well is this is a temporary camper setup for his uh, pull behind camper. So they want water out here on this property that they can tie in with a garden hose to their camper. So we're setting their pump in their tank where they can then bring their travel trailer down here and have water. In turn they will run this system off of a generator until they get their permanent power put in on the property. We're going to need that roll of gray wire out of the back of my truck.
So now that the system is complete, I went ahead and uh, provided a 240 volt generator plug. That way all he has to do is plug this into his generator, turn it on. It's over here, it's wired into the pressure switch, it's ready to go. And then the system will start operating. But unfortunately no one's here today and I have no generator today so I can't turn it on. But that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I'll be sure to answer it. If uh, this video didn't cover your topic, please check out my well pump Q&A playlist. There's dozens of videos on there that may help you. So uh, if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up if you learned something. And thanks for watching. See you next time.